What's going on? It's t Tuesday. What am I doing a show on Tuesday for? Well, I'll tell you why. Because PGA Best Ball is back, and I'm tired of seeing other slapdicks cover it and not even know what they're talking about. So I figured I would put out a special video going over PGA Best Ball. This year, it's not just the majors. It's the full season long, which I was after uh, underdog to do last year and they did so now the least i could do is pump it up a little bit get people excited about it and show you how to play it because so many people i mean it's just free like people have the worst strategy like they don't even understand the term plus ev oh they sure as shit understand the term negative ev because that's how all their lineups are looking what's up new guy my name's james better known as the degenerate 75 i'm a guy who is here to help you get better at dfs daily fantasy sports but today i'm going to be focusing on best ball specifically pga best ball if you uh, do you think that sounds interesting? Hang around, watch the video. Maybe drop a like and a subscribe, you mother father. I'd much appreciate it. I'm even going to do a live draft at the end, walk you through everything you need to know, and even show you my rankings because I'm kind of a tryhard and I make my own rankings. If you find you like the cut of my jib, come check out my DFS stream every Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. That's in the Lord's time zone. And, of course, Showdown Hoedown. I'm sure you noticed the intro. If you're not playing PGA DFS for round two, round three, and round four showdown, just tell me you hate golf because showdowns are where it's at, all right? Let's get going. Without further ado, new guy. First up, this is Underdog. Have you ever been over to Underdog? Because if you haven't, they do a match deposit. Use my code right there, Degenerate75, and you can put up to $100 in there, and they will match your deposit, which is awesome, right? So that you basically are getting double your money when you do it, right? And they have this thing up. This is brand new this year. They did PGA Best Ball last year, but it was only for the four majors, and then they did a second one for the last three majors. This year, they're doing it for the entire season long, and you can see they have three big tournaments up right now, and they're actually filling pretty quickly. The big $10, the main main one right here is already over halfway full. You can see when you click on it, it's already almost 60% of the way full. But if that's too steep for you or you don't like how big that contest is, they do have a smaller $3 uh, uh, um, entry and they have the bigger $100 entry where you only got to beat 1,680 people, right? So how does best ball work? Well, if, you ha if you've already done NFL best ball, you know how best ball works. It is a season-long event where you have to keep making cutoffs. You have to pass these thresholds, and each time you pass a threshold, the prizes get bigger and the points restart, right? So it's like, you know, you're not dead after one week. One bad week, you're not done, okay? And this one is quite a bit different than last year. This one has five stages you can see here, right? Round number one is going to consist of all the tournaments that start at the Waste Management, which is going to be February 8th through the 12th. I know that because I'm having a meetup at the Waste Management. Feel free to come, new guy. It's going to be a good time. And you can see it is going to run for the first six events. You are going to be against six people in that. It's going to be the six people you draft your lineup against, and you have to finish in the top two. So a great mathematician once said one third uh, of six is two people. So the top one third will advance in this and it's going to be a cumulative total right cumulative means all added up new guy and you can see it's going to be waste management genesis mexico open Co cognizant whatever api and the players right you'll notice each one of these end on a really big tournament the players the masters the pga the u.s open the open championship the the majors okay i know the players isn't a major but fucking deal with it bob all right so this first one's going to be six weeks you're gonna want to have guys who are accumulating fantasy points this isn't one and done where it's about how much money you make this is fantasy scoring how many birdies how many eagles how many non bogeys are you getting those are the things that matter towards the fantasy scoring here right and after the first six weeks they're going to take your total score and if you're in the top two in your league you will advance to round two all right but why it's called best ball is you are going to draft 10 guys. You draft 10 guys, and every week it will automatically take your six best scores from your pool and put them in your score. So if you have eight guys playing at the waste management and six of them do well, well, you're going to get the six best scores to go towards your total. Now, here's where it gets crappy. Say you only have five of your 10 players playing that week of the waste management. Well, you are only going to get at most five scores and say three of those guys do bad. Now you're getting two good scores, three crappy scores, and a zero while somebody else could be getting six guys so right here you can already see the format the game that needs to be played is you have got to survive round one i can't even point to it it's way the hell up there right so you need guys who are playing the hell out of those first six tournaments preferably guys who don't suck so the nutted guys are going to be guys who are playing in those first six tournaments and don't suck at golf that, that's like the holy grail of what we're looking for because all we can do is just try to make it one round at a time so if you're playing a bunch of guys that basically take off that swing 
swing right there, which is going to be, what is that? That's the end of the West Coast swing, end of the Florida swing in round one. You don't want to play those guys, right? Like, if, if you think Matthew Fitzpatrick's only going to play one of those six tournaments, why in the hell are you drafting him in the second round, right? You need guys who are, A, good at golf, but more important than that, you need guys who are going to be playing because if they're not playing, they can't get you any points, right? I would rather have the biggest slap dick in the world than a guy who's off because at least the slap dick's going to get me 20 points, right? So that is the format here. Once you advance to that, then you will go to a group of 10 people for round two, which will be the Valspar, the Texas Children's Open, Houston Open. I think I said open too many times. Valero, Texas Open, and the Masters, right? And the top three of the 10 will advance there. So, uh, you know, it's going to be the same 10 guys on your roster. So you need guys that are playing here, but you also need guys that are playing here. And uh, a lot of the bad teams that are drafted out there will already be kicked out in this first little cut. So you're going to be playing much better teams in round two. If you advance from that, you will advance to a six-person group where only one of six advances, and then another one of six. So if you make round five, you will be only one of 31 people to make the final, right? And then it's going to be fun because there's $10,000 up top, and you will have a one in 31 chance at winning it. And even within that, you're going to have the worst I think you can do is 500 or 700 50 bucks if you make the final and the final isn't going to be one tournament like it's been in the past it's going to be all five of those as a cumulative tournament you can see we got the travelers we have the rocket mortgage the john deere the genesis and the open so what are these m's on here the m's are just signifying majors right yes once again i know the, the players is not a major but it's basically like a major in that the same kind of people are going to be playing it right but we also have these things called signature events, okay? They're different this year than they were last year. The signature events are the ones that the top 50 players, plus they've added in a 10 additional players, get into. They have increased prize pools and all of that. We don't care about the increased prize pool because, once again, we don't care about how much money they make. We simply care about how many fantasy points they score. So the only reason that we have the signature events marked on here is because that with the increased prize pool, that increases the likelihood of somebody like Scotty Scheffler, Victor Hovland, Rory McIlroy, Xander, uh, Cantley, those guys showing up and playing and if those if those tournaments are more likely for those guys to play we want to denote that so we know when the top guys are going to be more likely to be playing but things like the mexico open and the in the houston open no one's going to be playing and we're still going to need our eric coles and our lee hodges and our chris kirks for those weeks right so it's going to be a balance of who's playing the most versus who is a good who is the best golfer and you got to marry those two things together okay so that is the basic premise of how pga best ball works Yes, they have all the rules over here if you want to go read them, but the big thing that I just want to keep harping on is this. I want you to remember that this is not based on money, how much they make at the tournament. It's based on how many fantasy points they score, okay? And if you go click right here and you go look at the little thing, you can see here's their breakdown of their points. All right, here. Uh, right, uh, par is 1.1, an eagle is 10, uh, a hole in one is 10, okay. Uh, you can see a birdie is four points, uh, bogeys are minus 1.2, bo double bogey minus 3.0. I'd be a big negative score but fortunately I'm not playing albatross that's a three under par for all of you that don't know that is a 20 points that's nice triple boogie or worse is minus seven yikes watch out ct pan uh and then and then we have the uh bogey free rounds consecutive birdies consecutive bogeys i like that one i would be tearing that one up uh and a uh, score relative to par okay so there you go those are the ways that you score on a week-to-week -week basis and remember it will be cumulative it'll take your top six players that week and you will get those points and then it will do it for that entire little stage we're going to call these stages or rounds so round one or stage one right here it will be the cumulative of how your guys did at all those tournaments, okay? So now that we know that, let's get over to the PGA best ball rules. These are the things that, like, if you've never played before, and it's great if you've never played before because the edge is real because the market is so unsophisticated on this. I've already seen one donkey who's, you know, trying to get season long going. When I was trying to tell you guys best ball was where it was at at PGA and you guys were trying to play season long, whatever. And welcome to best ball, you donkeys. You should have listened to me last year. And, like, the, 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 the content's just not sharp out there, okay? Don't know what they're doing. It's just simply, I'm going to draft the best player uh, here because I know his name. That's not how best ball works, pal. Okay, You need guys who are playing in tournaments. A mediocre player who is going to play in twice as many tournaments as a really good player is more valuable than the better player. Well, he's not going to get very good results. I would rather have some results than no results, Dickie. All right? You got to play the game here. Get out of your conventional wisdom of, of how you think about how things have to be done. Okay, We need guys who are going to be playing tournaments, and if they don't suck, that's just a bonus on top. Rule number one. 
Round one matters the most. When I am making my lineups, the number one thing I'm doing is I am trying to get out of the first round because you can be like, ooh, I'm going to draft these guys that play a whole bunch in the finals so I can win it all. Bro, you ain't going to get to the finals if you don't have guys who are playing in round one. You need dudes who are going to be playing a lot of these events right here so that you can have the best chance to get out of round one. Round four, round five don't matter if you don't get out of round one. As soon as you're eliminated, that lineup's done. So your sole goal is to get out of round one and you need guys who are playing in those first six tournaments that should be your focus to get guys who are playing in that tournament because that is the only way you're going to advance you need not worry about round two round three round four if there's no way you're advancing from round one so prioritize round one who's playing there and who plays well at those courses number two more tournaments better than talent you've probably already heard me say this three times some of these guys scotty scheffler is undoubtedly the best player on the pga tour right now it's not even questionable but we only have him projected to play about 14 to 15 tournaments this year where we have some guys projected to play 18 19 20 tournaments right now i will be the first to concede that scotty scheffler is probably still better than lee hodges even if lee hodges plays four more tournaments than him but at some point you're going to get to this point where you're like well is hideki matsuyama playing 12 tournaments really better than lee hodges playing 18 tournaments these are questions you need to ask yourself right yes Hideki will probably outperform Lee Hodges in the majority of those 12 tournaments but will he outperform him in the majority of those 18 tournaments six of which he's not even playing in these are the kind of questions you need to ask yourself because to me it is more important to have guys playing more tournaments than it is to be some big name ideally the goal is to get guys who play a lot and who are nutted players right off the top of my head i would think of a guy like victor hovland if he, if he plays 17 or 18 tournaments i would probably rather have that than somebody like scotty only playing 15 and once again, we don't know all their schedules, so we're just projecting, right? We're looking at where they played at the last two years. We're looking at the signature events. We're looking at the average number of tournaments they play a year, and we're projecting. That's all we can do, but that's more than what most people are doing. All right, ADP shows what idiots are doing. There's this thing called ADP, average draft position, right? And when you go over here, like if you go to rankings, you go click on rankings, and then you go to PGA, and you click on season, you can see right here, ADP, Scotty Scheffler, 1.1. That means on average, he is getting drafted at the 1.1 spot. That means 9 out of 10 people take him at number one, and the one guy who doesn't, he goes number two, okay? That is his average draft position. And all ADP shows you is what the, what the sheep are doing, the sheeple out there are doing, okay? They're just like, oh, I know that name. I'm going to draft him, which is not always the best method for best ball, right? Because once again, a guy like Colin Morikawa is playing great golf. Colin Morikawa is a very good golfer. But if Colin Morikawa is only going to play 12 of these tournaments that are going to be in this, how good is he really, right? This isn't about how much money you're going to make us. This isn't about how many majors or titles you're going to get us. This is simply about how many fantasy points you can score us over the most number of weeks, right? So you need to understand that just going off ADP and just drafting guys in the order of ADP, that is what morons do. Don't be that guy, okay? Make your own rankings. Yes, I have my own rankings that I'm going to give out to all my members at dgen75.com where I factor in things like their upside, the number of tournaments they're going to play, and all of those things to try to take some of the sweaty try-hardness out of it for you, okay? Number four, Forget live guys. Live is the alternate tournament, uh, uh, alternate tour, excuse me, of which you know Jonathan Ramathan just went to. I think old Wendy Clark is about to go over there too. And forget those guys. They literally can only play in four tournaments a year, and and that's the four majors. They can't even play in the players. Okay, so that's why it's only kind of a major. So with that, there's no reason you should draft those guys. If you want to draft John Rom for four tournaments, go ahead. But like I'm just telling you, that's literally his ceiling is four. Unless you think that somehow the PGA and Liv are going to get on the same uh, page in the next six months, whatever. That's that's just a bad play, man. Forget Liv guys. Move on from them. Let other donkeys draft them. You could be drafting a guy that could be playing 13, 14, 15 tournaments with your ninth round pick when other donkey dicks are taking J Jonathan Ramathan. Don't be that guy. And definitely don't be drafting guys like Brooks Koepka because he won a major last year. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. Number five, diversify your player pool. You'll find once you make rankings, especially once you make your rankings and they're different from what everybody's ADP is, you're going to end up drafting the exact same guy in the exact same spot a lot, right? Like say for instance, you really do value Sam Ryder a lot because you have him projected to play in a lot of tournaments and you're drafting him higher than ADP. You've got to be careful or you're going to end up drafting him in every single draft. 
If you're going to be doing 10, 15, 20, maybe 100 of these drafts, you want to diversify your player pool, your, your portfolio, right? You want to make sure that you don't have 95% Sam Ryder or 88% Lee Hodges. You have to be aware that when you are moving guys up in ADP, you're almost always going to be able to draft them because your rankings are different than everybody else's. But you also don't want to be 90% connected to Lee Hodges or, or Sam Ryder or whoever the random slapdick is, okay? By the way, the reason I keep using Lee Hodges is because he is a uh, projected to, to be in the most tournaments that me and my team came up with this year on the PGA Tour in those specific tournaments, okay? So make sure you're diversifying your player pool and not always drafting the same guys, okay? If you're making a bunch of lineups. Number six, make your own rankings, okay? As I already said, this goes perfectly with number uh, with number three. ADP is just what the sheeple are doing. It's just lazy people who are like, hey, man, that sounds fun. I'm going to go do that. I saw that slap dick on YouTube that just said this looks fun, so I'm doing it. And they're just going to go off ADP. You need to have your own rankings, and it needs to be based on how talented they are, how many tournaments they're playing, and when they're playing those tournaments. Because once again, playing in the first six tournaments is a, certainly the most important thing they could be doing because you've got to get through round one before you even need worry about the other rounds, brother. And lastly, look at contest structures, okay? They, as I've already told you, they have some really nice contests over there. But, like, you know, you might be thinking, all right, I'm going to go put $100 in using that code Degenerate75, and they're going to give you another 100 bucks. You think, okay, I'll put 20 lineups in this. But remember, you got to get through six rounds of people over here, and some of those rounds, as I showed you, is only one out of six advancing. Only one out of six advancing. That, that means only about 0.3% of people are going to make this final. Hard, Bob. That's hard. Right? Whereas if you go play in this $100, it is a much more friendly tournament. As you can see, uh, you, you, uh, how many people get to the final in this one? I, I don't even know. But I promise you, there is going to be a lot bigger percentage of people making the final in the $100 than this. So maybe you'd be better doing two of the $100 as opposed to 20 of the $10, right? Or if that's all out of your price range, you don't like the $10, we'll just go spam a bunch in the $3, right? And I bet as fast as these things are filling, because we still have three weeks until the waste management, I bet you're going to see even more tournaments, okay? So that is my rules for PGA best ball, things that you should consider, all right? Uh, I have my own right here. I have my own rankings and everything and the projections. This is called the Rosetta Stone. Yes, I'm putting it out for best ball. If you want that, simply come over to my site, dgen75.com. Of course, I do DraftKings PGA. Of course, I'm doing best ball. I do everything. There's nobody in this community that's a bigger tryhard at PGA DFS or PGA best ball than me. Uh, just look at the difference in this content versus what the other people are saying. Just so simply sign up for the golf only package, $34.99. I am telling you, you're going to want to lock that in. Big things are coming, and uh, that may no longer be there, all right? All right, the last thing we are going to do is we are going to go draft one. If you want to do a draft, this is all you do, right? This is the main page of Underdog. You come over here. You go click on PGA, and you'll be like, hey, where the hell is them tournaments? This is I'm not kidding. This is a little tricky. you got to go right here, down here to this little drop-down box and click 2024 PGA season. This is where the best ball ones are at, right? You go click on the $10. You click enter. You say, yes, I want to play, and it will be $10. You can see right now there's one, two, three, four people in this, so we're just waiting for two more people, and then we will do a draft, okay? And through the magic of the pause button, we are back. I had to wait for this to fill. Sometimes it'll take a couple minutes to fill because you got to wait for six people to be in it. It is now full. I had to go put it on my uh, Discord. I already see Dicehawk and uh, Jeff in there, a couple guys that came and filled it for me because it was still two, and I didn't want to sit here and just kill empty air. You got to remember they have two different kinds of drafts. They have this one where you draft every 30 seconds, right? I can knock out 10 of these at a time. I'm a machine. But if you like the slower burn and you want to think about it, they also have the slow eight-hour ones too where every person gets eight hours to pick. So they have that if you like the slower think about it drafts. But for me, I know what I want to draft. You can see I have my rankings up so my rankings up over there, and I'm ready to draft. Like I know what I'm gonna do. At number five, I can already tell you that I will probably be drafting old iceberg early because I think he is the rookie that is going to get a lot of play this year. I have him higher in my rankings than the ADP, because once again, fuck ADP. I don't care what other people are doing. I know who is likely to marry the two things called talent and playing a lot. And to me, Iceberg is a dude that is going way too late in ADP, so I will be more than happy to grab him at number five, who I almost assuredly will get here, because everybody else, I'm going to assume, maybe my people won't, uh, I'm nervous about Jeff here, uh, and see who they're going to draft, as you can see, Scheffler has went, Hovland has went, Jeff is going to think about it, get in there, get in there, uh, I, oh, I took Iceberg, this is what happens when you have a smart community, what a donkey, what a donkey that guy is. All right, he just totally kicked me in the nuts there. I was not expecting that. 
I guess I'm going to go Cantlay, but I really don't love Cantlay because we only have him projected to play about 14.5. But, uh, man, this is what happens when you invite people from your own community. Dicehawk's probably going to make some smart picks here. I think on the comeback, I'm probably uh, uh, targeting M, Spieth, and Cole simply because I think that those are guys who are going to play a lot of tournaments this year and are good at golf. That That's the two things I want, right? Um I really hope he takes Homa and Shoffley here uh, because I would feel kind of obligated to take Homa. I don't really want Xander. All right, he took Xander. See, Xander and Cantley as good as they are. Oh, he took Kawa. Okay, see, I, I think Morikawa is not going to play a ton this year. So I'm going to actually skip over Homa, and I'm actually going to take Sung J M here. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's be ballsy. I think, I think, I think we're going to take old Eric Cole because fuck ADP. I think he's a guy, I just think he's going to play 19 tournaments of this year and he's good and he's going to win. So I, and he scores a lot of fantasy points, right? And that's what we want is guys who are scoring birdies. So, you know, my, my, this is once again, this is, if you, if you do your own rankings, there's going to be a spot where I'm going to end up taking Eric Cole in the second round all the time because I have him higher in my rankings than other people do. So you want to be careful when drafting these not to always land on the same guys all the time. Terrell Hatton right there is a guy that I have quite a bit lower in my rankings than most people are going to have. See, Jeff, you can tell Jeff is a guy that is part. I think he's part. Yeah, I think that's the Jeff that's part of my staff. He helped me make these rankings. So he is taking guys that basically is marrying the strategy I'm talking about. He's already stepping on my dick. I love the start to his roster with Ludwig and and M. Most people are like, oh, my God, look at the ADP of those drafts, bro. The ADP, once again, it's just what the idiots are doing. We don't care. We want guys who are talented who are going to be playing a lot. Let me tell you a little secret. Iceberg and Sungjae, they play a lot, and they're good at golf. All right, we're playing the game. You have your picks and your doubts. We'll play the game, bro. All right, it looks like it's coming back to me. I'm going to be pretty happy to grab Tom Kim or Finau or probably even Postner. I just don't – yeah, I'm taking – oh, shit, he took Finau. Please don't take Tom Kim. Please don't take Tom Kim. He's going to take Tom Kim, and I'm going to be left with shitty Justin Thomas. Although I do think Justin Thomas – all right, he took Min Woo Lee. I'm taking Tom Kim. Pretty excited. I think Tom Kim's just one of those guys that's going to play a shit ton this year, and he's good at golf. Um, I, 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 I'd be fine taking uh, J, uh, Justin Thomas here in the fourth round. You can see I have some guys really above ADP here. So I'm kind of looking to get Thomas or Poston here on the sneak round. You can see how fast these drafts are going. This draft is already halfway over, right? We're already through the end of the third round. Wait, I'm a lying piece of shit. There's 10 rounds, so we're, uh, we're already about a third of the way over. Dicehawk's just going to take a sweet freaking time. Goodness gracious, hurry up. Can I talk? Where, where's the place where you talk shit? All right, he took Fitzpatrick, who I just have projected not playing at hardly any at all this year. That's why I don't like him, but I also haven't put out my rankings, so we're going to give Dicehawk a free pass here, okay? I'm really hoping that I get Thomas here. I'll settle for Poston, but those are the two guys I'm definitely looking at grabbing here because I think they're guys that are just going to be playing a lot this year, and you know what? They both score fantasy points because they put that little ball in the hole in fewer strokes than they're supposed to. That's what they do well. Jesus, Dicehawk, go faster. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to literally message him. Go faster. All right, he took post, and we're taking JT. All right, so you can see how this is going, right? We're going we're gonna to draft our full 10, and the big thing is, is when you get down to the last few rounds, rounds 8, 9, and 10, here's what I want you to do. I really want you to think about not drafting ADP, but use those last three rounds to kind of get weird. Draft some guys that, you know, maybe have no ADP, right? Some guys you'll see, like, like Alexander Bjork has no ADP. Literally nobody is drafting him. Same thing with old Joel Damon. No one is drafting him. Uh, no one is drafting uh, David Lingmarth, but these guys are, these guys are going to be uh, playing some events right so if there's some guys down here you don't mind go grab them right um, that that would be my advice for you I would say that for the last three rounds but that's a way to really diversify your roster and not be duped by somebody else and not get into the exact same build that everybody else is doing right so that is what I'm going to be doing once it once it gets uh, to me in those last three rounds I'm really going to be taking some slime balls and not even worrying about their ADP or their average draft position right you can see we are now into the fifth round, so we are basically halfway over with these drafts. You see that there is long enough that you could be doing three, four, five, six of these at a time. Now, will six of them be running at the same time? Maybe, maybe not. But I can tell you this, uh, when the waste management gets closer, these things will be running all the time. Man, I would love to get Brian Harmon here. I would love to get Brian Harmon here. Yeah, we're taking Brian Harmon. Uh, actually, you know what? We'll take. I, I have Chris Kirk projected to play more, and I think Chris Kirk's going to be good. Uh, and um, I'm pretty happy on this come around, either getting Harmon, English, or Connors. I think they're all really good. You can see I have uh, Harris English quite a bit higher in my rankings than ADP, simply just because we have him projected to play a lot. Old Ropat likes to play golf, and he likes to get out there. And uh, you know, he, he's pretty consistent. All right, there goes the Hobbit, the Harmon, the Hobbit. He's gone. 
wouldn't mind getting uh, Harris English or Corey Connors. I'm happy with either of those here. So we're going to we're definitely getting one of those as Dicehawk takes this one. I had to send him a message saying draft faster. Uh, he took Burns, so we are going to take. You know what? This this roster's been a little contrarian, so instead of taking another low ADP guy, I think I'm going to just take the safer Corey Connors here, okay? And the, why do I do that? Because my ro I've already started constructing this roster so much different that I don't mind going with a slightly more obvious Corey Connors there, right? Had I taken some more chalk up top, you know, a Scheffler and then a whoever, like just basically going with ADP, I'd probably take Harris English there just to make my roster a little bit different and build my team differently than everybody else's. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, letting it snake back around guys that we're really targeting see like this is where guys like cam young hideki guys like this i think that they're a little overvalued i don't think they play enough to justify their adp right so those are guys i have quite a bit lower i mean you can see i have guys like harris english um ranked ahead of them i have some of these other guys that already went ahead this actually is a pretty sharp draft here i can i know at least two of these guys are part of my community so they're not dumb shits but uh it, it's disappointing how smart like this fence in here like th these guys are drafting smart right uh, I really hope old Ropat Harris English gets back to me here. Um, you know, guys like Keegan, Day, Decky, they're all really good players, but they don't play as many tournaments as you think they do, right? And because of those limited amount of tournaments they play, that really nerfs the value that they add to your roster. So I'm a little reluctant to uh, uh, reach and get those guys, but I will say they're starting to get pretty below ADP here. So I'm probably going to take Harris English, and my backup here is probably going to be Jason Day. Um uh, let's see. And then on this, this sneak around, I'm wondering who we're going to get. Probably going to, I'm probably going to reach on Lee Hodges. Cause as I've told you, we, you know, like you can't look at these projected points that st stupid, uh, uh, underdog puts on there because they're just pulling those out of their ass. They're not basing those projections on anything, right? So we we passed on Ropat last time. It snaked around and we still got Ropat. So I think right here I'm probably going to either reach with Bobby Mack or Lee Hodges, two guys that I have projected to play a shit ton this year. I think the obvious pick that most people would take here would be Cam Davis or Hideki, but I just don't think that those guys are going to play as much. And down here, I want scrubs who are going to be playing a lot of tournaments, so those weeks that some of my studs are off, I'm still accumulating points from six guys because you need to be getting points from six guys every time dice hawk just slower than molasses jesus dice hawk i hope you watch this playback all right he took adam had one i think we're gonna go bobby mack here just call it a feeling more than a feeling see his adp is 60 i took him at 44 because i don't give a shit about your adp i don't care what the sheeple are drafting i'm drafting my team and i want to build it different than other people are and most importantly i want my rounds eight nine and ten to be differently built than other people are so i'm not going to go off your stupid adp also could have took andrew putnam there i think andrew putnam i think bo hostler aaron rye those are all guys that are going to be playing in a lot of tournaments this year guys i could have taken to really fill out that roster we have them projected some of those guys 18 or 19 of those tournaments and you got to remember looking back over here we only have what is that 6 10 14 18 we only have 23 tournaments so if you have a guy projected to play in 18 or 19 of those they're basically playing almost every week for you about 80 percent of them right which is what we want so we only got a couple more picks here. Uh, we, we just took round eight. So we got round nine and ten, and we're done. That, that just shows you how fast these go, okay? I encourage you, if you have any comments, uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment on this, or simply just sign up for my newsletter, right, which I'm pretty sure the editor will put in the description of this, and sign up for a free week on my website. No strings attached. No credit card. No nothing. You just sign up for the newsletter. Show the editor you did it, and we will get you a free week. And most importantly, if you're going to go sign up at Underdog and you don't use my code to match your deposit, just tell me you're an idiot and you hate money, right? Or better yet, just tell me you only make your picks off of ADP. Yeah, donkey. I'm kidding. I like you, new guy. I like the cut of your jib. Be there Wednesday night. That's 7 o'clock in the Lord's time zone. All right, I can't, I, I, Cam Davis still being there. I feel like I'm getting some pretty good value taking Cam Davis here. So I think I'm going to take Cam Davis. Uh, his, his ADP is, you know, he's a good player. Cam Davis is good. Even though I don't have him projected to play a lot, I do like his upside when he does play. And I've already drafted so many hoes that are going to be playing a lot that I'm going to take him here. And then I'm almost certainly going to get Lee Hodges on the snake around with Alex Norn as my backup. And that will be how I finish. I also wouldn't mind Andrew Putnam here as uh, he's going to be playing ho-ho bunch this year okay so we're gonna do this pick we're gonna get out of here i appreciate all of you guys coming by i hope this has been informative i hope that you try some pga best ball i want to grow this i'm telling you best ball is so much fun it's a great uh little addition to uh the dfs community and i love it use my code here it goes lee hodges with the final pick that is our roster if you want to see we got can't Lake cole tom kim justin thomas kirk connors harris english bobby matt cam davis lee hodges i love this team simply because i've got good golfers who are going to be playing a lot of tournaments and they're going to be playing a lot
spot in those first six tournaments where I got to get through round one. Guys, it has been real. It has been fun. I might do another one of these if you're hitting the like, if you're hitting the subscribe. I appreciate every single one of you. But for now, enjoy this outro.